wonder. Mm. Say that I wanted to go ah, to Singapore, never been there, don't know the customs, don't know anything about it, but I'd like to go there in the physical, knowing that I can manifest myself there. Mm -hmm. Is it the same process? And how will I know if I'm there if I've never been there before? Does that make sense? <laughs> You start with some place you already know, okay? You start by putting yourself someplace you already know and you know all the details. Then you can expand to Singapore, okay? Okay, so I'm jumping the gun, I can dig it. Are you? <laughs> it's the same process, it's the same thing. I mean, if I can go anywhere and do anything, it's so how funny. <laughs> There's a lot going on up here, sorry. <laughs> If I can answer the one part of the question that stood out, me the, stood out to me the most. Is it the same process? Yes. Okay. Okay? That is manifestation and however you choose it. But you will be focusing your vector intent, so to speak, will be on teleportation idea of manifestation of a location in your reality. Do you follow? Yes. Okay. So, if you want to skip over to that, go ahead. However, you might want to practice the idea first of manifesting out of thin air. But then, that's a choice. But yes, this is all connected. And you will know if you're in Singapore because maybe the surroundings will be a little unfamiliar to you. And then you can just ask an entity on the street, am I in Singapore? Yeah, that would be fun. Okay. okay. There we go. Good girl. <laughs> Awesome. And if they say no, it's the river walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the river walk. It has a fun. You'll know because the smell will be very different. Right. right. Oh, oh, smell. Very good. Smell is your yeah. instant. You know you're in a different place. Okay. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Very good. So, any more questions, anybody? I have a question. Mm hmm. I will translate. Hmm. Your white bird people, so to speak. Do you see them? Okay. And you will understand why I'm asking this question. Do you see the white bird people with brown spots? Hmm, let's say, actually, more closer to black, but if you truly look at them, they are a black, brown, and a deep blue, much like your raven blue mix of spots down the back and only visible when the underside of the wing is present. Does that sound familiar? I, I actually have only, now that you're saying that, I saw them as people mm -hmm. transforming into birds. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I probably missed the detail in the transformation, but they look like white birds. Let me tap in. You'll have to pardon the delay. The Akashic records are, let's say, a mess. <clears throat> so many probabilities. That is a fourth density civilization that played amongst your Lumerian times as shapeshifters, observers of the new DNA in contemplation whether the hybridization of that DNA would be behooving that species at that time. 
their idea of giving themselves the bird body, so to speak, was the fascination with flight. They chose that on their 3D equatable world to terror. in this universe of Akashica. Thank you. Oh, we're not done. <laughs> <coughs> Shape-shifting, seeing, studying, did not participate in the hybridization Nevertheless, still observant, still observing, still present. Sound is very important. Song, singing, sound. Sound. Here, you just gave me this download. Are you ready? What do you think a shape-shifting bird equates to in your memory? Where, what culture, so to speak, used that? Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Phoenix was an idea. Native Americans had yes. lots. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was their shapeshifters given to them to mm, give them God's idea. It was a tool of the totem pole idea. Mm -hmm. There you go. That was one of their helpings, yes. interactions. That's all for that. Excuse me, wasn't one of the birds in the Indian, um, different birds elevate different uh, levels of spirituality? Oh, yes. yes. Let me give you this idea. Again, it's a belief system. When a certain person gets a idea of a bird in the Native American culture, we use this as an example, the idea behind that is the intention given by the higher self to that individual in forgetfulness to grasp onto the meaning that excites them. That becomes the spiritual idea because now there is a trust behind it. You are always Always, all of you, 100% of the time, trusting something that creates your reality. So, different levels of spirituality were given by different bird ideas with different entities to give them the tools that they can impart on those that needed that tool in a particular moment to help themselves. That's why there's always class a vast number of ideas, vast number, in this case, birds, the raven, the phoenix, the thunderhawk, the thunderbird, all of those had different meanings for different entities, for different understandings of remembrance ascension, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, in that idea, when you were looking at a new paradigm that is remembered or understood, Whatever your trust is in that is to help you. Now, if you now stand upon that individual and say, no, 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 this bird means this, then of course you're missing the whole point. Because mm -hmm. that bird might mean something else to someone else. And their own personal ascension. Okay? So nothing is set in stone. The minute you carve something as a meaning to be as fact, then you're living in the la-la world of logic. And that world is the most limiting place on your paradigm. Are you following? Yes. Oh, wonderful. May I interject? <coughs> yes. That is your, your being, your consciousness, covenant with the master of the universe. You are that white bird. Yes. And the shapeshifter is mine. Heritage? Is your heritage. Both spiritual mm -hmm. and physical. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the whiteness, especially if you take it into your writings, is, is the covenant that the Master of the Universe has made with you. Mm -hmm. There's a destiny that you're about to step into. 
that you'll have a dream in the next couple of days about. And it's going to be very crystal, and that bird will appear, which is you, your higher consciousness, and you'll be with the collective again, with the synchronicity of all of us. And what you've been petitioning, there's been something you've been asking for a long time. It's going, you're going to have the answer. That is the... Will it be in the form of the bird? Yes. She'll be that bird again. Hmm. I've been that bird a few times. Yes. You're going to be that bird again. Thank you. How awesome. Choose these words that were given to you as your understanding to yourself for your ascension. For once again, synchronistically, it is in, by choice of you, in your reality. Awesome. Love the synchronicity. Love all the nows of being prevalent. Hmm. So, moving on, is there any more questions? I have a question about the Ganaba, or <coughs> should I say it's about Chi energy, or the energy that's inside of the third density, mm -hmm. that's inside of my body. Um, where is that Chi, or... Rita. Say again. Rita. Where is that Chi? Go ahead. Where is the... Uh, Where is the chi? Mm -hmm. The chi is everywhere. There you go. Everywhere. So, so manifesting chi as an individual, you know... It, okay, it, you're not creating chi. Right. Chi is everywhere. Right. You're pulling chi from the universe and channeling it through your body, okay? Mm -hmm. But the chi is always there. So how much you channel is up to you. How much will you mm -hmm. allow? Mm -hmm. The physical vehicle is a... Is a focal point. Yeah. Right. Like like a lens for a laser. Okay. Right. The idea of your chakras and your pranic tube, if you choose it to call that, that goes from your crown down to your sacrum and into the earth is an idea to pull the chi up and down as a focal point, which she just said. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So the question is, where is it in me? Mm -hmm. It is you. Are you following? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm following. Is that right, Rita? Do you agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a different perspective, but wonderful. Thank you. Because that is the right idea, if you choose it to be. Don't make it separate in me. Hmm. Go. Um, also, don't make it an effort. Wow. It's effortless. You just ask. Ask and you shall receive. Mm -hmm. It's like the orange. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The knowingness of it, right? If you have to choose a spot and choose the same place you choose to create the orange from. It's not being right? and then analytical. Usually it's at the end of the hand. That, I mean, if you were thinking from the chakra out at arm's length, well, then that's like the Reiki position or the movement of the chi and that sort of... And then it's coming through the palms of your it's hands. It's coming through the palms of your yeah. hands, and that's also the same thing from Qigong and Tai Chi, right? It's all created. And, and your body is simply the vehicle to build the energy to the level that you would like to work with. That you can be aware of. Yes. It's, it's trusting that it's in your hand, and so you want to know where it is, mm -hmm. right? But it's not really in your hand. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. A new portal has just opened up. It is purple in color. Mm. Let's see who's coming. Pardon the walk in. A familiarity, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, that's your choice. We will use this vessel for an understanding. If you choose to accept it, it's not up to us, is it? For you are choosing once again this to be in your reality. All of you are co-creating this moment to get this impartation of what?
you got it. Do what you will, for telepathy is among you. Two in one day, how awesome. So, any more questions? If there are not, we will end. But if someone has and I'm excited to give, by all means, please. Then, if there is no more questions, I would love my highest excitement, my joy, to give you my eternal gratitude and love for accepting the human <coughs> gain of life. The hardest incarnation of all nows. You have our eternal love. I bid you good day. Adonai. Hi. 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 Yeah. Um, was your last walk-in? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask I was like, I don't know who that was. It was a uh, uh, purple portal, mm -hmm. and then... Uh -huh. And then... Yeah. Yeah. It was the last night. When it I felt like that. I went to bed, I saw a whole bunch of purple. And I told my husband, where's all this purple coming from? Like, it wasn't like purple everywhere. It felt like It was just telepathic. Yeah. It was... Yeah. Like, your what's that? It felt like St. Germain. Yeah. Hmm. That's what I got. Interesting. We talked a lot about telepathy and all of those kinds of things. Might have been. And manifestation of the same objects, too. A lot of fun to A lot of energy. A lot of interaction. A lot of royalty. All right, we're good. Thank you, guys. Love you. Thank you. Thank you.